The audio tab is all about feeding the audio stems into the game that we created. And then down at the bottom here is a song preview start time, which allows us to set the beginning of a 30 second preview of the song. And that's the little snippet that players are going to hear when they're browsing the in-game store. If they run across your song and they're thinking about buying it, um, this allows them to hear a portion of it. And then um, also once you get to the point where you're uploading the song into the uh, Rock Band Network for playtesting and peer review, other members of the community are going to be able to hear that same preview, and that may be what um, causes them to decide whether they want to spend time testing your song or not. So you want to try to pick something that's going to entice people to spend time with your music. If there's an interesting feature like a great guitar solo, you want to make sure that shows up somewhere in that 30-second preview. Otherwise, you're kind of missing out on an opportunity to promote something that might be a real selling point for people. So browsing to the stems is pretty straightforward. The only one where there's a little bit of complexity is on the drum mix, simply because there's different scenarios in terms of what stems you even have. So we've got um, separate stems for the kick drum, the snare, and the kit mix. So I'm going to pick that one, but you don't necessarily always have the luxury of having them all separated out like that. So you would just pick uh, the one that's appropriate for the um, stem configuration that you've got. Just be aware that there are some special text events in the actual MIDI track for the drum part in Reaper that you're going to need to set if you are going with a, a different configuration of stems here. Those have to match, and we'll spend more time talking about that when we're actually authoring the drum part. So I'll go ahead and start browsing to the stems, and notice the kick drum, which you might expect to find first, is actually down here at the bottom of the section. So we'll grab the kick stem that we rendered out from Reaper. Here's the snare stem, and here's the kit mix with everything else in it. And then I'll just go ahead and grab the rest of these. Okay, so I've got all my stems loaded in here. If you audition the song in the game and you find that you're wanting to make some little fine adjustments to the loudness of the individual stems, you can come in here and, um, and make them a little bit louder or softer using these controls over here. Um, within certain limitations that I won't go into here, but you can experiment with that. But mostly you want to be doing your mixing in Reaper and rendering those changes out in the stems. This is mostly just if there's like a really last minute um, adjustment that you want to make. In terms of the song preview, I took a spin through the song earlier and I found a spot right around 3 minutes 2 seconds where I felt like there was an area that might do a good job of of showing off the song. So sometimes you'll try that for a while and then change your mind and come back in here to the RB proj file and, and change something like that. Render out a new RBA file and, and re-upload to the network. So that's it for the audio tab. Now I'll go ahead and move on to game data and we'll wrap it up. So on the game data tab, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to browse to the MIDI file that we created as one of the last things we did when we were working in Reaper in an earlier segment and it was called heartstrings.mid right there in our um, project folder. And then the next piece is related to auto-generation, and there's kind of two flavors uh, or two approaches to auto-generation. There's sort of a passive approach where if you just leave certain areas of your MIDI blank, then Magma here is going to go ahead and um, take a shot at putting some cues in for you that will provide some placeholder animation and lighting and camera work until you go in and set those yourself. But then um, that's sort of done behind the scenes and not something that you're, that you're really able to adjust. But you actually can use a kind of a more explicit or active uh, auto-generation technique that will allow Magma to auto-generate some of that stuff for you in a way that you can then go back in and, and make some fine adjustments to or even use that as a baseline or a starting point for doing your own venue and animation work. And essentially the way the passive approach works is if you just leave your venue track blank in Reaper, which is essentially for camera and lighting cues, and then if you leave your instrument tracks blank in terms of animation cues for the avatars, then Magma will go ahead and, and start to put those in for you. In terms of the active approach, you would want to go ahead and choose one of these preset themes and then that, coupled with the practice sections that we put into the events track and the fact that we haven't put any animation cues into the instrument parts or the venue track, um, will allow us to actually export 
a MIDI package that we could later open in Reaper and manually copy and paste sections of that auto-generated material out and into our tracks um, on our own. And that way you can kind of pick and choose what you like and preserve the auto-generation work that was done as opposed to it just being a temporary kind of one-off thing. So that's something that you want to experiment with and there's actually quite a bit of documentation on the creator site about auto-generation now. It was a little bit mysterious when Rock Band Network 2.0 first came out, but it's been pretty heavily documented by the community. And, um, and spend some time with it. You can really get a lot of interesting um, help and, um, and speed out of it in terms of your process. The animation speed is based on the tempo of the song, and there's a couple different speeds you can choose from. And if you're not sure what tempo your song is running at, you can always just look back here in Reaper, scroll all the way up to the top to the master track where you created the tempo map and if you just mouse over any of your tempo map nodes that little tooltip that pops up will tell you what um, tempo the song is running at at that particular moment and that can vary a little bit but for the most part unless your song has specific meter changes in it you'll see that you're probably somewhere around looks like we're right around 170 175 beats per minute which it technically classifies as a fast song so we'll go ahead and choose that vocal percussion if you're not real familiar with rock band from a vocal player's perspective occasionally you'll have these sections where the you're not singing but you can actually tap on the microphone and create a tambourine or a cowbell effect usually during like a long guitar solo or something and so those are things that are manually authored during the vocal authoring piece of the process but here in magma you can control which form that takes it could be a hand clap a cowbell or a tambourine we can also set the gender the default gender of the vocalist this will get overridden if the player has their own band members that they've selected but if you're in like a quick play situation and the game is allowed to just randomly pick from the preset stock avatars then it'll try to favor a female if you've selected female in here as the as the lead vocalist etc we can control the scrolling speed of the lyrics in the vocal HUD if we maybe have a, a lot of density in our lyrics or a really fast-paced song or something like that where maybe there are issues with the readability of the lyrics and so forth. So the vocal guide pitch is something that's only in play when we're testing the song in audition mode in Rock Band 3. And it allows us to tell whether we've charted our vocal notes correctly by letting us listen to a, a MIDI-generated tone overlaid over the top of the actual audio of the song and we can use the directional pad on the 360 game controller to toggle that on and off and we can listen to the pitch for the lead vocal or for either of the harmony parts and compare it to what the singer is singing and see if it sounds right and you'll instantly be able to tell if it's starting to sound sharp or flat and interestingly there'll be times when you swear you've charted it right on when you're working in Reaper and then you bring it into the game and turn on that vocal guide pitch and all of a sudden it's really obvious that you're a little bit sharp or flat in your charting but there are cases where the just the nature of the song make it harder to hear the vocal pitch, or maybe it's really overpowering the song and you want to adjust it. You can you can set what that is here. And then the last thing is the difficulty tiering for each of your instrument parts, and then for the full band experience. And people will get into really religious discussions about how to assess this, but really the best way to get good at this is to do a lot of testing of other people's songs and watch the discussion around that, and then play a lot of rock band yourself and look at you know the harmonics authored songs and DLC and see how they tier their difficulties and try to use those things as precedents. But ultimately, it, it just kind of becomes a gut check. And until I've had any opportunity to spend a lot of time with the song, I'll just come through here and kind of set everything at an average difficulty tier, usually two to three dot is pretty average and then you know if you go up or down from there it's it's because there's something really unusually hard or difficult about that song but i just like to do this because i'm always paranoid that i'm going to forget to set something for them so all our information is put in now i'll come back here to the first tab and then i'm gonna just do a quick save to make sure that everything that i've done here is preserved and then it's time to go ahead and try our very first build and if it builds successfully we'll be able to transfer it over to the console and nothing will really be working. The band members won't be doing anything on screen, but we'll at least have successfully arrived at kind of a baseline state where now the song compiles and will load up in the game and then from there we can start our uh, instrument charting. So I'll just go ahead and hit build and cross my fingers. So 
So you'll notice that the compiler is giving you a series of status messages, and there will be some steps that it always goes through. There will be some warnings, and then if you have actual errors in your MIDI, then it'll start to throw those as well. And if you get down here to the step where it actually says it's building the PCM file, which is the final audio you're going to hear in the game, then you know you've gotten past all the rigorous checks and balances in terms of it looking at your MIDI and trying to find rule violations and stuff like that. So that's always a happy thing that you want to see down here at the bottom. And that will take longer just because it's processing through all those audio files. But what's nice is um, once that's done for the first time, uh, if you come back and tweak the information here in Magma, or if you are making adjustments to your MIDI, then next time you run the compiler, it's not going to have to build your audio all over again, and you'll get to skip that step, and the compiler will run much faster. And you'll only have to sit through this phase again if you, if you make adjustments to the actual audio itself. So at this point I'll switch gears and we'll take a look at what we're actually seeing in Rock Band 3 instead of what you're seeing on your computer. And um, so here, I'm just here on the main screen of Rock Band 3, signed in with my gamer tag that's associated with a Windows Live ID that's also associated with an XNA um, developer account. And then I just go into Options and Extras, and then under there you find Audition Mode, which is built right into the game. And then at that point, the game essentially goes into a waiting state where it's going to be listening for a song transfer coming from your computer. So now that Rock Band 3 is ready to receive the song into audition mode, I just come back here to Magma and click Audition. And it's going to try to find my console, so I just hit Search for Xbox. And as long as my 360 is on the same network as the computer that I'm sending from here, it'll be able to find it. It sees um, the gamer tag that's logged into Rock Band. And then I go ahead and it's automatically loaded up the RBA file. And then I go ahead and hit transfer to selected Xbox. Okay, so now we just hit A on the 360 game controller, move to the next screen, which essentially lets us choose from a bunch of options about what we want to see when we're testing the song. I can set the drum fills to turn on or off if I don't want to see those for um, some reason while I'm testing drums. And set the venue, and then for each of my instruments I can rotate through the different instruments for these three uh, slots that are not the vocalist. So basically on those three slots I can be looking at drums, pro drums, keys, pro keys, bass or guitar. On the vocal slot I can basically be using single part vocals or harmonies. And then I can also be choosing whether I want to manually play these parts and I can even sign into these various slots with my different instruments or I can just let the computer autoplay them for me and you'll do a sort of a combination of both as you're testing and then when I'm ready I'll just hit start audition and the song will go ahead and load up. So as soon as the song loads up the first thing you're going to notice is that there's no notes, there's nothing to play. There'll just be a single placeholder note at the beginning of each of the instruments and one note and lyric at the beginning of the vocal track that were just part of the Reaper template. Essentially we're obviously going to have to go in and do all the work to author those parts, but you'll notice that the highways look kind of lonely and empty and the band member avatars look kind of disconnected from what's going on because they haven't had any animation cues set yet that will let them know what they're supposed to do. We're also seeing some basic lighting cues going on and some camera cuts that were part of the auto generation that Magma did for us. That gives us a chance to at least get in there and get an early sense of what the song is going to look like. And then if I want to slow things down, um, I can just hit the directional pad on the game controller and then there's multiple speeds of slowness that you can go down to if you really need to get in and scrutinize something that's going on with your animation or with your note charts. And then you can even speed it up if you need to quickly skip ahead to a later part in the song. Um, using the shoulder buttons on the controller, you can also do sort of TiVo style jumping around on the timeline. If you look um, over near the top right there, there's an MBT counter which is basically telling us what measure, beat, and tick we're at in the song. And I can jump around by larger and larger chunks of time using those shoulder buttons. So uh, again, this is all just sort of about arriving at a baseline state where you know you can compile the song with no errors and get it successfully transferred to the console, which even though it doesn't look like much, is actually kind of an accomplishment in and of itself. And in my opinion, is the hardest part to figure out on your own if you're just sitting down and looking at the documentation. After you finally arrive at this point, each of the individual instrument phases is relatively straightforward and is much easier to pick up on just from reading the documentation. So I hope it's helpful.